Hello everyone. Welcome to our channel Ashok IT and this is Ashok. In Linux with Shell Scripting free training program, today is our first session. As part of today's session, what we are going to learn? Let us see the agenda first. In today's session, we are going to learn what are the real-time use cases with Linux operating system and who can learn this Linux? What are the prerequisites to learn the Linux? What is our course content? And what is operating system? What are the differences between Windows operating system and Linux operating system? And what is Linux history? What are the distributions available for Linux? And how to set up Linux virtual machine in the AWS cloud? And how to connect with that machine? All right, let's get started. First, where we will use Linux operating system in the real time? In the real time, as part of our project, development and operations, we are going to use several tools like this, Tomcat, Jenkins, Docker, Kubernetes, Nexus, Sonar, ELK Stack, Ansible, Terraform. All these tools we are going to install in the Linux machine only in the real time. Because of Linux advantages, every company will prefer Linux OS to run the servers, to run the database, to deploy the application. So if you know this Linux operating system, then easily you can work with your project operations. But who can learn this Linux? If you are an undergraduate, still you can learn the Linux operating system. Definitely it is going to be helpful for you when you are attending for the interviews. And the graduates who are trying for the jobs, definitely they have to learn the Linux OS because nowadays in every interview they are asking, the candidates are having the knowledge on the Linux operating system or not. And working professionals, if you're already working in the company, then definitely you know the importance of the Linux. Developers, testers, DevOps engineers, cloud engineers, all these people will work with Linux operating system. DevOps engineers will install the software servers by using Linux machine only. The infrastructure setup will happen on the Linux machine only in the real time. And the developers, testers will connect with the Linux machines to check the logs of the application in order to deploy the applications. So that's why it's not specific to only particular stream. Developers, testers, DevOps engineers, cloud engineers, all these people should know how to use Linux machines as part of our project operations. Fine, next one. What are the prerequisites to learn this Linux OS? There are no specific prerequisites, guys. Programming knowledge is not required no specific prerequisites available. The only thing is to set up Linux virtual machine in the cloud, you need to have account in the AWS cloud. That is also free tier account. You don't need to pay the money. You can create the free tier account in the AWS cloud. Then we will set up Linux virtual machine in the AWS cloud for our practice. As part of this course, we are going to learn several Linux commands practically. To do the practice, one Linux virtual machine we will set up in the AWS cloud. That is the prerequisite. Next one. As part of this course, what we are going to learn. So a lot of topics we are going to learn as part of this two weeks Linux program. We will learn how to set up Linux virtual machine, how to connect with that, how Linux will work, what is the architecture, how to create files and directories, how to work with the text editors, how to do user management, file permissions, file ownership, networking commands, how to work with link files, what is package manager, how to install softwares in the Linux machine, why we need to go for shell scripting, how to write the shell script to automate our manual work, and how to do the cron jobs execution in the Linux machine, job scheduling, and several frequently asked interview questions also we are going to cover as part of the course. So the daily live class will happen at 6.30 p.m. IST, and the soft copy material also you are going to get to get that soft copy notes. So please join in the WhatsApp group, which is available in description of this video. You will get all the class updates in that WhatsApp group. Then next, coming to the actual topic, what is operating system? Operating system is a software that is going to act as mediator between users and computers. As you see in the diagram, if user want to perform some operation in the computer, then definitely operating system is required, which is going to act as a mediator. Without having operating system, we cannot use that computer. There is no use of computer if OS is not available in that. And there are several operating systems available in the market. Windows, Linux, Mac operating systems are available. 
Next one, what is Windows operating system? Windows operating system developed by Microsoft company and this is commercial operating system. We need to purchase the license to use the Windows operating system and Windows is GUI based operating system. GUI based on nothing but graphical user interface. So if you go to Windows machine here, you can perform operations with the GUI. For example, I want to rename this file. I can right click and I can do the file rename. Similarly, I can delete this file. I can copy this file and I can perform several operations with the GUI. So that is the reason Windows operating system is called as GUI based operating system. And it is single user based operating system. Nothing but only one person can use Windows machine at a time. That is the reason it is called single user based operating system. And the security features are less in the Windows operating system. That's why we will install antivirus softwares in the Windows machine to protect our files from virus. And Windows operating system is recommended for personal use. If you want to play the games, watch movies, attend online classes, then you can use Windows operating system. But in the real time, as part of our project's development and project operations, project deployments, we are going to use Linux machines. What is Linux? Linux is community-based operating system. That means it is not belongs to any company. And Linux is free operating system and it is open source. You no need to pay the money in order to use this Linux operating system. And this is CLI based operating system. CLI based operating system, nothing but command line operating system. In the Windows, GUI will be available to perform the operations. Whereas in the Linux, CLI based operations we need to do. For example, if I want to see all the files in the Linux machine, ls command. If I want to create one file, then touch command. Okay, if I want to create one directory, mkdir command. So like this, we are going to use commands to perform operations in the Linux. That's why Linux is called as CLI based operating system, whereas Windows is called as GUI based operating system. And another advantage, Linux is multi-user based operating system. That means multiple people can connect with the same Linux machine at a time and can perform multitasking. So in the team, there are five people available. They want to work with the Jenkins machine at a time to create the pipelines. Yes, these five people can connect with the same Linux machine at a time. That's the reason it is called as multi-user based operating system. And Linux provides high security when compared with the Windows machine. So that's why we no need to install antivirus softwares in the Linux machine, but for Windows, it is required. And for business use cases, like if you want to deploy your servers, if you want to deploy your application, if you want to set up your infrastructure required for the project, if you want to store the logs of your application, people will use Linux operating system. So what are the differences between Windows and Linux? You can understand here. Coming to the next point, how this Linux operating system came into market? What is the history behind Linux operating system? Linux operating system developed by a person called Linus Torvalds in the year of 1991. This person got inspired by another operating system, which is Minux operating system. Earlier, he, he used Unix operating system and he gave some suggestions to change the Unix operating system, but they rejected his suggestions. Then he found the Minux operating system, which is similar to his ideas. Then he has taken the source code of the Minux operating system and he modified that according to his ideas. Then he provided that new operating system into market with a name called Linux. So he has taken two characters from his name and the last three characters from the Minux and he named it as Linux operating system. That's the reason it is called community based operating system. It's not belongs to any company. Linus Torvalds developed this Linux operating system and gave into market for free of cost. And it is open source also. This Linux operating system is free and open source. When this software came into market along with the source code, many companies taken the source code of the Linux operating system and they modified that source code according to their requirement and they released into market with the different names. Those are called as Linux distributions. So there are several distributions available for Linux operating system like Amazon Linux, Red Hat Linux, Ubuntu Linux, CentOS, SUSE Linux, Kali Linux, Fedora Linux is available. 
So please comment on this video, which Linux distribution you are using in your project. Right. So like this, there are 200 plus Linux distributions available in the market based on the requirement. People will choose any one distribution to set up their infrastructure. So these Linux distributions are also called as Linux flavors, 200 plus flavors available for Linux operating system from different, different companies. All these companies has taken the source code of the Linux OS given by Linus Torvalds. They modified that and they released into market with their own brand name. Those are called Linux distributions. All right. Next one, how we are going to practice Linux commands. How we are going to learn the Linux OS as part of this course. We are going to take one Linux virtual machine in the AWS cloud and we will connect with that Linux virtual machine by using SSH client. So I'm using my Windows machine to take this class. So here I want to practice Linux. For that, I will take a Linux machine in the AWS cloud for free of cost. Then I will connect it to that Linux machine from my Windows machine by using SSH client. There are several SSH client softwares available in the market for free of cost. We can use Git Bash as a SSH client to connect with that machine. You can use Mobile Extram. You can use Putty also to connect with this machine. In this video, I will show you how to create Linux machine in the AWS cloud and how to connect with that by using Git Bash as a SSH client. And in the description of this video, I'm giving the links to understand how to connect with the EC2 Linux machine by using Mobile Extram and Putty also. So total, you can use three approaches to connect with the Linux machine by using SSH client option. Here I logged in into my AWS account. You can go to services and select compute option. Here you can see EC2, which is used to create virtual servers in the cloud. Select this EC2. Here there is an option called launch instance option is available. Click on this option. Here I'm giving the name for my instance as my VM and you can select the AMI. Here there are different AMIs available like Amazon Linux, Ubuntu Linux, Red Hat Linux and Windows, Mac OS also available. I'm selecting Amazon Linux and here instance type, which is very important. I'm selecting T2 Micro, which is free tier eligible. This will give one GB RAM. If you want high configuration system, then you can select the instance types, but charges applicable. Suppose if you go for T2 medium instance, four GB RAM will be available, but per hour bill will be generated. For practice purpose, I'm going to use T2 Micro, which is free tier eligible, nothing but it's free of cost. Then coming to key pair, this is used to connect with our machine securely. If you have the key pairs already, you can select those key pairs. If you don't have, you can create a new key pair. I'm creating new key pair. Click on create new key pair. You can give the name for that. I'm using a name and I will select dot pem here. I'm going to create a pem file, my AWS pem, right? Now click on create key pair. It will download the key pair in our system. You can see in the downloads folder, one key pair is downloaded. Okay. Once it is downloaded, then you can select launch instance. With this, our EC2 instance is getting created. Once instance is created, you can see the instance ID. Click on this instance ID. Then it will display the instance information. Now you can select the instance by using this checkbox and you can refresh the state of this. Now the instance state is running. So once you select this checkbox, it will display the information of the instance, public IP of the instance, private IP of the instance. We will use this public IP to connect with this machine. Now, once you select this checkbox here, connect option is enabled. Click on this connect option. And here SSH client option is available. I'm selecting SSH client. So here they have provided the steps also in order to connect with this machine. Open SSH client. I'm going to use Git bash as the SSH client. So simply type download Git. Okay. So once you click on download Git, you can go to the git scm.com website. Here you can download the Git client for your machine. So I'm using Windows machine so I can download it for Windows. Then Git client software will be downloaded in the .exe file. You simply install that Git client software. So once you have installed that Git client, you can go to the location where the PEM file is downloaded. So in the downloads folder, my AWS PEM file is downloaded. So this is the location of my PEM file. Now go to the location where the PEM file is available. 
right click on your mouse and go to show more options here git bash is i have already installed git bash in my system so once you install the git client you will get this option simply click on this with this git client software will open here this one we are using as a ssh client in order to connect with the ec2 instance now go to the aws here they have given the steps by following these steps we can connect i opened my client and i located where my pem file is available then i need to give read permission for this pem file so by using this ch mode command i will give the read permission for the pem file just click on this icon to copy the command go to the git bash and execute it so with this we are able to execute that command then go and copy this example command here this is ssh client command so by using this ssh command we can connect with the ec2 instance i'm just copying this command now go to this git bash and right click paste it so execute this command also once we execute this command it is asking are you sure you want to continue to connect with the machine yes i want to connect with that machine with this i'm trying to connect with the ec2 instance by using this ssh client yes if you are able to see this option that means successfully i'm able to connect with the ec2 instance by using git bash so you can execute the commands here linux commands who am i so who am i command will display with which user name we connected to this machine we connected to this machine by using ec2 user and here you can practice the linux commands thank you guys thanks for watching this video and we'll see you in the next video so if you like my content please like this video and comment on this video